Good morning, viewers. Welcome to our program today from Ye um, Yesu Sung Savera. My name is Robert Slack, and uh, I'm pleased to be here to share some more of God's Word with you. Um, in our last series, we were looking at uh, the subject of how can you understand the Bible. Now today, uh, following on from that, we're going to look at the subject, how can you meditate on God's Word? You know, meditation is something that is very, very important if you are a believer. But there are very few people who really understand what meditation means. So we're going to start looking at that today and we'll look at the scriptures and see how that can help us to understand the meaning of meditation and what it means to you personally, because that's what it's all about. You know, God's word is a very practical thing. You know, and being a believer is also a very practical thing. So we, a lot of times we know the theory about something, but we're not sure how we can put that into practice in our lives. But those are some of the things that we're going to deal with in this program. So pay attention. It might be handy if you have a little notebook. To, you can write down some of these Bible verses that I will be giving you or some notes. But later on, we'll also be placing a, uh, a PDF uh, that will be available with these study notes so that you can, if you want them, you can contact us and we can send them to you. Okay, so meditation is important. It's a very important part of our lives because through meditation we receive revelation from God. And that's when understanding comes to our spirit as well as to our mind. And this is very, very important, you know. Um, you cannot grasp the, the importance and the power of the Word of God without meditating on it, because through meditating on it, it becomes alive. You know, um, an illustration of the importance of meditation we can see in the life of David. You know, King David, he started out as a, as a shepherd boy. You know, he was the youngest of all his brothers, so his father sent him out to look after their flock of sheep. Now, when you're just out with a flock of sheep in the wilderness all day, there is nobody you can talk to. There are not many things that you can do, I'm just keeping an eye on the sheep now and again, that they don't wander off. So he had plenty of time to do it. But David used the time wisely. You know, he used it to meditate on God's Word. You know, he, through this, he gained a great understanding of what the covenant with God, what that means, what it meant to him as a believer. You know, and this is something that is very important. You know, we see that this is something that changed David's life. You know, when he was still a young boy, only 17, you know, his father sent him to go and visit his brothers, who were supposed to be in a battle with the Philistines, but nothing was happening because these people were all overcome by fear. But David came there and he saw the giant, so he started asking, well, what's the king going to do with the person who goes out and kills this giant? You know, And uh, he, because he was asking this question a lot, the king heard about it very quickly. And so they brought him to King Saul. And then David said to him, he said, your servant, and this is in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 36, and it says, your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, since he has taunted the armies of the living God. You know, when David called Goliath an uncircumcised Philistine, he was referring to the fact that the Philistines, they were not believers in God, so they had no covenant with God. There was no blood covenant in place there. And so this man had no protection. Whereas David, because he had an understanding of his covenant relationship with God, he, was, he knew that God was there protecting him. And that's why he was not afraid. So meditation is something that we could say here, it led to David killing the giant and bringing about a great victory for the people of Israel. He was the only one in Israel at that time 
who understood this because everybody else was afraid. No one wanted to fight with the giant. But David did because he had confidence because he'd been meditating on the things of God. If we look at Joshua, you know, he is another great example of what meditation can do. You know, he was the servant of Moses for 40 years. And then when Moses died, the leadership role that passed over to Joshua. You know, God appointed him as leader of the people of Israel. Now, God gave him some advice, and I think that that is very good advice for each one of us. We can read, read that in Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 to 9. Now, these are God's instructions personally to Joshua. And I just want to look at verse 8, because this is something that is very, very important. Everybody wants to be successful. Everybody wants to receive God's blessing on their lives. But we need to realize we have to do some things to receive that. Now, God said in verse 8, He said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Now, if you want to be prosperous, if you want to be successful, now I think I'm sure that you do, this is something that you have to do. You have to keep God's word in your mouth and you have to meditate on God's word. Not just now and again, not just once a week, but he said to Joshua, you meditate continually on my word. The things that I've said that are written down, you meditate on those and this will change your life. This will make you successful. It will make you prosperous because you'll receive the wisdom from those words and you will act accordingly. So it's a combination here of meditating on God's word and also speaking it. Because when you speak it, you are actually confessing that over yourself. And that's going to lead to a change in your life. Here, a lot of people have a misunderstanding. They think that God does everything, but he does not. You know, he, God works with us. You know, there are things that God does, but our responsibility also, we have certain things that we must do. So he's telling us here what our responsibility is. Okay? So you are the one who is responsible to meditate on the scriptures. You are the one who is responsible to speak those words, speak those scriptures, to talk about them confess them over your life. You know, no one else can do that for you. you know, this is why believing in God is a very personal thing. You cannot believe for anyone else. You can only believe for yourself. Yeah, you can share your faith, tell others what you believe, but they must decide for themselves and believe as well. So when we're un meditating, we get understanding. We're obeying God and that causes these things to come to pass in our lives. Now, I just want to read Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3. This is also really good. It says here, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he will be like a tree, firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers. Now, I'm sure you want to prosper. We already talked about that. Everybody wants to be prosperous. And he's telling us here again, everybody wants to be blessed. But he's telling us here what we have to do to receive these things. He says, firstly, this man does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. So you, you don't listen to what evil people are telling you. You know, there are a lot of people who are walking around telling all sorts of stories. You know, many people are gossips. They speak evil of other people. You know, if you hear that sort of thing, stop it straight away. You know, clean your ears because you don't want that getting down into your heart. You know, so don't 
walk with people who were like that. You know, people are always criticizing others, who are judging others, condemning others. You know, you don't need those sort of things in your life. He says he doesn't stand in the path of sinners. You know, that means you're not spending all of your time with people who do not believe in God, people who don't respect or revere or love God. Don't spend your time with those people. It's going to slow you down. He says here, he was firstly walking, but now he says he's standing. Yeah. And then he goes on. This is a, pro a progression, well, a digression. It's going from a high point down to a low point. You know, and the lowest point, he says, you're, you end up sitting then in the seat of scoffers. If you do these other things, you'll become a scoffer. You will scoff at God, what he says in his word, and what other people are saying who believe in God. And you make it difficult for yourself then to believe the word of God. He says, but, so this means, this is the change. It says his delight is in the law of God and he meditates in that day and night. Now this is exactly what God said to Joshua. Remember he said, if you want to be prosperous, if you want to be successful, meditate on this word day and night. And he says, he describes him here, he says, you'll be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in its season. So this will cause you to become fruitful. You're going to produce things in your life. Not only material things, but also on the spiritual side, you are going to be blessed. You will experience the joy of the Lord in your life. You will have no fear in your life. You'll change your way you think. You'll become a different person. You'll be fruitful. And he says its leaf does not wither. You know, he's talking about here like in a time of drought. You know, a lot of trees will lose their leaves. They'll wither away and die. But he says, if you are doing these things, you are not going to wither. So you won't be dependent on the economy. You won't be dependent on the economic circumstances you know while everybody is crying and say what a terrible mess we're in you will not be worried because he says here whatever you do you will prosper and i think that is very important then we bring god into everything that we do in our lives now here he's telling us we meditate continually on god's word and to be prosperous now you? so you can begin to understand now what the importance of meditation is and what for an impact it can have upon your life because that's the reason that we do it we want to change so what does this word meditate mean <clears throat> now there are a couple of words in the Hebrew language that are used to express this thought of meditation one is called haga and that means to moan to mutter to muse meditate or mourn and the other word that's used is siyach, and that means to ponder, that is to converse with yourself, like talking to yourself, and hence aloud. Now, and it also means to utter, you know, that's to complain, declare, meditate, pray, speak, muse. You know. Now, this sounds familiar, I hope, you know, because we all do that. You know. The word to mutter, that means to speak things quietly under your breath. It's like you're speaking to yourself. Now, regardless of whether people around you can hear you or not. See, the scripture was designed to be heard. Yeah? Not just to be read silently, but to, to speak it out. Now, we're just going to stop there and we'll just have a little bit of a pause. And after the break, we'll be right back to continue this study about meditation. Thank you. Well, welcome back, viewers. So we're, we'll just continue on now with our study on meditation. Now, just before the break, I was talking about muttering, you know, what that means, because we see that's one of the meanings of meditating. 
Well, this repeated muttering means to speak things quietly under your breath. So <clears throat> it is talking to yourself, you know. Now, whether you realize or not, that's something that we all do. So it means you're already doing that. So you're practicing this without realizing it. You know, for example, if you are really deeply in thought about some subject, something that you're concentrating on, maybe you're trying to figure out a solution to a problem, and then you, you start, you find yourself talking to yourself, you know, speaking aloud that process, the thinking process that you're going through. Yeah, and this is what this word means. Now, the second thing is to muse. Now, that means to ponder, to consider, and to study closely. Now, this is an aspect of meditation that most people are also aware of. You know, uh, taking hold of a promise from God's word and going over it again and again, and you keep going over it again and again, not to try and memorize it, although, if you go over it a lot, you will start to memorize it. But the point is you are trying to understand everything that this, this passage of scripture is telling you. That's what I got. And so you can, um, you're allowing yourself to absorb it. You know, it's getting down into your inner man, into your spirit, your heart, as it were. And this is very important because this is where you want it to be because the life you know, the springs of life, the Bible says, that comes forth out of your heart. So you want to get the right things down into your heart. You know, so meditation, you can say it's like a process of, uh, you can compare it like the process of chewing on a tough piece of meat. Yeah? Have you ever noticed that? You, you get a piece of meat and you start chewing on it and it's, oh, it's as tough as anything. Yeah? It's like chewing a piece of rubber. And, but what do you do? You keep on chewing on it and eventually it becomes, it starts to become tender. Yeah? It takes a little while, you're chewing on it, it becomes tender and you, you're getting all of the nourishment out of it. Now that's what you're doing when you're meditating on God's word. You know, you're getting everything out of that scripture that you can. You know, it's like, maybe you've seen that, like a, a chicken or something roasting on a spit. You know, it's on the spit over a fire and you, you can turn that around and around and so the chicken it gets cooked on all the sides so it's perfectly cooked. You do that with the Word of God. You know, you meditate on the Scripture. You start looking at it from all different angles. You start asking yourself questions about it, you know. And by when you're doing this, you're opening up your spirit to God because you want to hear God's explanation. You don't want to read things into it. But when you're doing this, you're opening up your spirit and you're in a good position to understand what the Spirit is saying to you. Because the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, He is our teacher. That's one of His main tasks, is to teach us and to lead us into the truth. So while you're meditating, you're starting to get an understanding of what the Scripture is talking about. So you keep on meditating on it until you revelation from God comes and the understanding comes and this is what makes the difference between something that is alive and something that's dead. You know, you can read the newspaper but it's not going to help you at all spiritually. You know, a lot of people read the Bible just like it was the newspaper and what happens? Absolutely nothing. You know, it's just like a dead letter then but it has to become alive. You know? Um, in Psalm 19, verse 14, it says this, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You know, so we want what's coming out of our mouths and what's going into our hearts, we want them to agree with God says in his word because that's what pleases him. That's what makes God's word come alive in our lives. So meditation, that's God's plan, that's God's way of getting his word into our heart. It's his way of getting us to understand it. So it's more than just reading something, you know, it's fixing our attention, our complete attention on the scripture. Now, 
I just want to read a verse to you. It's in uh, Psalm 77 and verse 6. And this is what it says. It says, I will remember, I will remember my song in the night. I will meditate with my heart and my spirit ponders. So he says in meditation is something that we do with our heart. You know, so it's not just like part of our thinking process. It goes past that where our spirit is in contact with God. We are communing with God and he's teaching us. Yeah? So we have to concentrate on the spirit, on, on the scripture that we're meditating on. You, know, you can't meditate when your mind is occupied with all sorts of other things. You know, so if your mind is thinking about all sorts of problems and so that you have, you won't be able to meditate on God's word. So you have to get somewhere where you are quiet in order to be able to listen to the voice of God's spirit. You know, you, if you're sitting down in front of the television for a couple of hours watching TV, you know, and then you go to your room and try and meditate on the scriptures, it's going to be very difficult. You know, because you're feeding your spirit a lot of other things, different things than what the Word of God is and what God wants you to get down into your spirit. So you've got to be careful about that. You've got to be able to focus your ten attention completely on God's Word. You know, you don't want to be distracted by things. So you need to seek a quiet time. David, King David, he said that he loved the night watches. Now, that was when he, in the army, uh, people had to do guard duty. You know, so while their, their colleagues uh, are sleeping, someone has to be awake. Somebody has to be on guard to watch you know, for the enemy, make sure they're, they're not overrun while they're sleeping. You know, that would be a disaster. So David said he loved the night watches. Now, why was that? Why would he love the night watches? You know, everybody hated that because they would like to sleep at night. You know? But David knew in the night watches it was very quiet. See, everybody's asleep. It's dark, so you can't hardly see anything. And that's the perfect situation then to meditate on God's word. No distractions. You know, you can get your mind quiet. You put all those things that may have been bothering you, you put them out of your mind, and you focus completely on God's word. You focus on that passage that you are meditating on. In Psalm 63 verse 6, David wrote this. He said, when I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. And this is what he was doing, you know, even if in the night he was just lying on his bed, he's awake there, but his mind's just not empty. <laughs> Our mind is never empty, We're always thinking about something. But he's lying there and he's concentrating on God's word. You know, that's what he is thinking about because he wants to get something from it. So if you have that attitude and say, look, I want to get God, something out of God's word, you have to learn to meditate. Now, just like everything else, it takes practice. But once you start and once the revelations start to come from God's word, your life will never be the same again. It will change you completely. Now, when you're meditating, there are quite a few things that you need to keep in mind. And here are some points that will help you. Now, when you're meditating on God's word, you need to make it personal. Now, a lot of people, when they read the Bible, unconsciously, they think like God is talking about somebody else. It's not talking to them. You know, the Bible is like a personal letter that God has written to each one of us. So the words that we are reading there, even though it might be talking about someone else, they are words that we can apply to our own lives. And this is very important that you keep that in mind. Yeah? You're not just seeking the meaning, you are seeking to find what does it mean for me personally? You know, what is God saying to me through this scripture? You know, so keep that in mind. You know, I'll give you an example. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, it's, it's like a well-known scripture. It says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Now, when it says Christ there, that word, that Greek word means the anointing or the anointed one. 
you know, Jesus was the anointed one. That's why he was called the Christ. But, you know, the translators, when they translated the Bible into our language, they never translated this word. So we think when you read that sometimes, you think it's talking about Jesus as a person, where it is talking about the anointing of God's spirit that was upon his life. You know, so I can do all things through his anointing. You know, when God is strengthening me, when he's anointing me there, I can do all things. You know, that was something that Paul was confessing. So start confessing that over your lives. But if you're reading that, you have to picture yourself. You know, you have to learn to look and see yourself possessing what the Bible is talking about. So if I'm meditating on this scripture, I will start to see myself as being someone whom God has provided everything. You know, I can see, like Jesus told his disciples to go out. He said, go and preach the gospel. He told them to go and heal people who were sick. He told them to go and cast out the demons you know, and teach the kingdom of God. You know, so I see myself then. I see myself when I go and I, people who are sick, I see myself laying hands on them and I see them recovering, coming well. Someone is demon possessed. I see myself speaking and casting that demon out in the name of Jesus and the person becoming free. You know, I can see myself sharing the gospel with people. You know, I start, have to start to see that, see myself doing these things. You know, when I do that, I'm starting to make that scripture personal. Otherwise, when I'm reading it, I'm thinking, oh, that's nice. You know, maybe God is talking about the pastor of the church or he's talking about somebody else. But I'm not really grasping that it is for me until I see myself doing these things that it is talking about. So, See yourself the way God sees you. No, that's very important. Yeah. Uh, a second thing is, let the Holy Spirit make the words a reality to your heart. Yeah. The word needs to become alive for it to become powerful in your life. Yeah, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it tells us that God's word it's quick and it is powerful. You know, it is piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. But on the contrary, he says it's quick, it's powerful. In other words, the word quick means it's alive. You know, God's word is not something that's dead. You know, they're like words on a piece of paper, but they are alive. Those words God spoke. And when God spoke, you may remember how God created the world. He spoke faith he spoke and it happened you know that's the way it works in our lives you know we have to but that word has to become powerful you've got to be convinced of it you know so be convinced that the word of god is powerful you know it you have to be persuaded that it is powerful that it is true you know you have to store it up as a good treasure in your heart you know in matthew chapter 12 verse 35 we read but Jesus said this to his disciples. He said, the good man, out of his good treasure, he brings forth what is good. And the evil man, out of his evil treasure, he brings forth what is evil. So if you, you're going to bring forth something, it means it's got to be there to start with. But we're just going to um, round off our program for today. The time is running out for us. But just remember, if, you, uh, if this is helping you, if you would like to get the study notes, then you can contact us and we will be glad to supply you with them. So start to put this into practice in your life. Because if you don't put it into practice, you have no benefit of it. You know, it just goes in one ear and out the other. But start to practice these things. Put the theory into practice and you will see that it will change your life. And that is what God wants. God bless you, and we'll see you again next week.
Do not forget to like the video, subscribe BTL TV and press the bell icon to receive notifications. Jesus is the light of 